All right, so let's do an example of solving a first-order differential equation. So let's say we have a differential equation that looks like this, where we have 2 dy by dx plus 6y is equal to 4. And let's say we have an initial condition where y0 is equal to 2. So we're going to employ the technique of separation of variables. And so what this means is that we're going to take these two pieces, or at least this 6y, and we're going to move it to the other side. And what that leaves us with is 2 dy by dx is equal to 4 minus 6y. And the reason why we did this is so that we can now take all these pieces and we can then divide both sides by this 4 minus 6y so that we can have every piece of y all on one side in one term and that we can have all the terms with respect to x. So here we have our dx part, and we can move that to the right-hand side so that we have the right-hand side being only terms of y. So what that looks like is we have 2 dy divided by 4 minus 6y, and that's equal to dx. And so like I said, we now on the left-hand side have everything in terms of y. On the right-hand side, we have everything in terms of x. And so now we can then integrate both sides. And I'm going to simplify this integral on the left-hand side because I'm just going to put the 2 on the outside. 2 dy by 4 minus 6y. Take the integral there. And then here I'm also going to have the integral with respect to dx. And if I take that integral, I might as well evaluate this right away, but I'm just going to get x plus my c, which is my constant of integration. Now to evaluate this integral on the left-hand side, I'm going to employ integration by substitution. So I'm going to let u be equal to 4 minus 6y. du by dy, that's going to be equal to minus 6. And so if I rearrange this term, then I can get dy is equal to minus du divided by 6. Because all I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply both sides by dy, and I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. What that means is that I can put this substitution back into my integral. So here I've got 2. My integral, well here I've got dy on top. dy is equal to negative du over 6. I have my u is equal to 4 minus 6y. So I end up with 1 over u. I'm going to now remove the minus 6 from my integral. So if I have 2 on top and 6 on the bottom, I get 1 third. So I got negative 1 third. And my integral has been simplified to du over u. And that's equal to x plus c. And the integral of du over u, well, that's just equal to the natural logarithm of u. So now if I take my substitution and I put my substitution back in, I have negative 1 third natural logarithm of 4 minus 6y, and that's equal to x plus c. And the one thing I forgot to add here is that I have a plus c that I need, and I can move that plus c to the other side, and I can combine it, both plus c's, into this one super c term. So this is c right-hand side plus c left-hand side. But I don't need to worry about that because they're all just combined into a single constant, and that's okay. What I need to do, though, is I need to write this term in terms of y is equal to x, because that's what solving a differential equation means, is that I have y as a function of x, and so I need to have just y on the left-hand side. So I'm going to have to take this term on the bottom, and I'm going to have to still do some algebra to it. So what that looks like is, and I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to move him back up here at the top. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 3, and what that leaves me with is natural logarithm of 4 minus 6y, and that's equal to minus 3x plus c. And again, I don't write a 3 or anything in front of this c because, again, the constant absorbs the minus 3, so it becomes just a new constant. I'm going to take the exponent of both sides. So the exponent of the natural logarithm just gives me the inside of the natural logarithm, 4 minus 6y. But on the left, or sorry, on the right hand side, I'm going to get e to the negative 3x plus c. 
I'm now going to continue to move stuff from the left hand side to the right hand side. So I'm going to take this 4, I'm going to move it to the right hand side, minus 6y is equal to e minus 3x plus c, and I'm going to subtract 4. And then finally, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. So y is equal to e negative 3x plus c minus 4 divided by negative 6. Now the final thing I'm going to do with this is that here, this exponential, I have e is equal or e to the power of negative 3x plus c. Now when I have the exponent of something where that exponent is the summation of two things, I can split that up. And what that looks like essentially is if I have e to the power of x plus y, then that's the same thing as saying e to the x times e to the y. So I'm going to use that here, where I'm going to say y is equal to e to the negative 3x times e to the power of c minus 4 divided by 6, or negative 6, I should say. And because e to some arbitrary constant is still just some number, then I'm going to simplify this again. I'm just going to say now I just have some constant c e to the negative 3x minus 4 divided by negative 6. And again, it's this term right here, this e to the power of c. Well, that's just some constant. It's just some number that I'm going to solve for in a second. And so that's what I'm writing here is to be this c. So this at this point, I can now claim we have at least solved the differential equation to a level that we have now a function of y as a function of x. So y is equal to something. So if I know my independent variable, which is my x, then I can tell me my y based on this original differential equation that we started with here at the top. But we're not quite done yet because we still have this initial condition. And with this initial condition, this y naught is equal to 2, what it allows us to do is to find out what this value of c is going to be. So let's solve for that. So if I start a new plane here, just to start from scratch, we would say y is equal to c e to the negative 3x minus 4 divided by negative 6. And we know that our initial condition is that at y naught, y or at x is, the, is equal to 0, y is equal to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute these numbers into my differential expression. So I have 2 is equal to c e to the negative 3 times 0 minus 4 divided by negative 6. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 6, so I'm going to get minus 12 is equal to c. Well, e to the power of minus 3 times 0, which is e to the power of 0, which means that that value is equal to 1. And I still have my minus 4 that's attached there. So now I'm going to move my minus 4 to the other side. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Minus 12 plus 4 is equal to minus 8 is equal to c. So at this point then we can write our final answer as y is equal to negative 8 e to the negative 3x minus 4 divided by negative 6. And maybe at this point it's okay to multiply out this negative sign since I have negatives on top and a negative on the bottom. So I'm just going to write y is equal to 8 e to the negative 3x plus 4 divided by 6. And I may even take this one step further where I can divide 2 out on all these terms. So I'm going to get 4 e to the negative 3x plus 2 divided by 3. And in the end, this would be my full solution for my differential equation, or at least my first order differential equation. All right, so now I know you're asking, so this is nice that we now have the solution, but I want to verify that it's the correct solution. And so this is the great thing about differential equations is that you can take the solution that you just calculated, you can put that back into the original so there, the original problem that was posed with the original differential equation and verify that the solution that you just found is valid for that differential equation. So what this means is that we are going to take this original differential equation that we started with, this 2 dy by dx plus 6y is equal to 4, and we're going to plug in this solution that we just got which is the answer of the solution to our differential equation. So let's start. We have 
2 dy by dx plus 6y is equal to 4. And we have our solution where y is equal to 4e to the negative 3x plus 2 divided by 3. Now you can see right away I can take this y, which is this value right here, and I can plug that right into there where that 6y is. I can plug the y right into there. But I have this second term, this dy by dx. So I have to find the derivative of our solution. So let's do that. If I take dy by dx, what we have here, what I'm going to do to simplify this is I'm going to say d by dx, and I'm going to break this into two terms, where I'm going to have 4e to the negative 3x divided by 3 plus d by dx of 2 over 3. And right away we can see that the derivative with respect to x of 2 thirds, that's just going to be equal to 0. So that's something that we can immediately forget about. This term here on the left is 4e to the minus 3x divided by 3. Well, we can take the derivative with respect to that. And we're just going to play the chain rule to do that. So we've got 4 over 3. We know the derivative of the outer function. This is the e, the exponent part. Well, since that remains the same, because the derivative of an exponent is just itself again. But of course, we have to take the derivative of the inner function, which is this minus 3x. So I'm going to then multiply this whole term by minus 3. I have a minus 3 on top. I have a 3 on the bottom. So the derivative is minus 4 e to the minus 3x. Now that I have that, I can now take this dy by dx term that we just calculated, this minus 4 e to the negative 3x, and I can plug that into there, into our differential equation. So let's do both now and actually solve to make sure that we get the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, and hence we can verify that the differential equation that we solved the solution is in fact the solution for this differential equation. So I'm going to have 2, I'm going to plug in for dy by dx, minus 4 e to the minus 3x plus 6 times y, so that's 6 times 4e to the negative 3x plus 2 divided by 3, and that's all equal to 4. And so again, our goal here is to basically make, or basically see if the left-hand side, if all of this is equal to 4, is equal to the right-hand side. So what we have to do is do some simplification. This first term I'm going to get minus 8e to the negative 3x. The second term, to simplify this, I'm going to multiply the top, or multiply the second term by 2 over 2. So I'm essentially multiplying it by 1, but I'm just multiplying it as 2 over 2. And the reason why I'm doing that is that what I end up getting is 8e to the negative 3x plus 4 divided by 6 because I've got 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, and on the bottom I've got 2 times 3 is 6. And again, all that is still equal to 4. But now I've got 6 on top and I've got 6 on the bottom for this full term, so I can cross off the 6s. And then if I continue to write this out, I get 8e to the minus 3x plus 8e to the minus 3x plus 4 is equal to 4. And here I've got negative 8e to the minus 3x. Here I've got plus 8e to the minus 3x. So this term and this term cancel out. And what I'm left with in the end is 4 is equal to 4. And so what that tells me is that the solution that we had calculated previous is a solution for this differential equation and that I know that I have the correct solution. And so this is a check that you can always perform on differential equations.